So in this question, we're given three probabilities. So we're given the probability of A is equal to 0 0.35. We're given that the probability of B is equal to 0 0.45. And we're given that the probability of A intersect B, or otherwise known as A and B, which is given by this symbol here, that is equal to 0 0.13. And in part A of this question, we're asked to find the probability of the complement of A given complement of B. So the complement symbol is this little dash which appears at the top of the letter. So like I said, we're being asked to find the probability of the complement of A given the complement of B. So we have a formula which we can use for these conditional probabilities. And we know that the probability of A given B is going to be equal to the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. And this time, remember in our question we're looking at the complement, but this in effect doesn't change and we just replace in our formula our A with com A complement and our B with B complement. So therefore, the formula we're going to use is the probability of the complement of A given the probability of the complement of B is going to be equal to the probability of the complement of A intersected with the complement of B, and we divide this by the probability of B complement. So what we can do now is we need to work out all these parts of the formula before we can then put them into our formula. So we first take a look at the probability of the complement of B. So we're told that the probability of B is equal to 0.45, so then the probability of not B or complement B is therefore going to be 1 minus 0 0.45, which is equal to 0 0.55. And then now we want to work out the probability of the complement of A intersected with the complement of B. And how are we going to do this? So if we have a Venn diagram, so just say like this, for example, and we have A and we have b. So just for example we have a and we have b. So we know that what I'm highlighting in yellow here that is going to be a intersect b and then we know that what I now highlight in green is going to be the, the opposite of this. So this means we can work this green highlighted area out by first working out the probability of the union of a and b and that is going to be equal to 0.35 which is a probability of A, plus 0 0.45, which is a probability of B. And then we take away the intersection of A and B, the probability of the intersection of A and B, which is 0 0.13. And putting this into our calculator, this comes out as 0 0.67. So therefore, we can then find the probability of not A intersected with not B, or the complement of B, and that is going to be equal to 1, which is the whole maximum probability. And we subtract 0 0.67 from that, which gives us 0 0.33. So then just to confirm, the two important numbers here is 0 0.33 and 0 0.55. So what we can now do is take these numbers and substitute them back into our original equation. So we'll then have the probability of not A intersected with not B, which is going to be equal to 0 0.33. And we divide this by the probability of the complement of B, which is 0 0.55. And then putting this into our calculator, this comes out as 0 0.6. So therefore, we can say that the probability of the complement of A given the complement of B is going to be equal to 0 0.6. So in this question, there was two marks available and we received our first mark for knowing to use this formula and getting to the stage where we had 0 0.33 over 0 0.55 and then we received our second mark for getting the correct answer. So then in part B of this question, we're asked to explain why the events A and B are not independent. So we know that if the event A and the event B are independent, then we know the following. So we know that the probability of A 
multiplied by the probability of B must be equal to the probability of A intersect B. So, for our case, we have the required information, so we compute it to see if they are independent. So therefore, we have that the probability of A intersect B from the question is going to be equal to 0 0.13. And the probability of A is going to be equal to 0 0.35. And the probability of B is going to be equal to 0 0.45. So therefore, probability of A multiplied by the probability of B is going to be equal to 0 0.35 multiplied by 0 0.45. And putting that into our calculator, we get that that is 0 0.15. 75 but then we have that that is not equal to 0 0.13 where 0 0.13 is the probability of a intersect b so therefore since probability of a intersect b is not equal to the probability of a multiplied by the probability of b a and b are not independent so this question was worth one mark and we received this one mark for having a fully correct explanation which included the correct probabilities and the comparison between the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B and the probability of A intersect B. So for part C of this question, we're told that event C has the probability of 0 0.20 and we're told that events A and C are mutually exclusive and the events B and C are statistically independent. And what we're asked to do is to draw a Venn diagram to illustrate the events A, B, and C, and we're to give the probabilities for each region. So first of all, we're gonna make a few notes to help us frame the question. So what does mutually exclusive mean? So it means that two events cannot happen simultaneously. So therefore, in our case, we have the A and C are mutually exclusive. So this means that A and C cannot happen simultaneously. And then we have that B and C are statistically independent. This just means the same as independent. So writing that down, statistically independent, just has the same meaning as independent. So therefore, in our case, we have that B and C are independent. So here I have a box, which I'm going to draw my Venn diagram in. So we know that A and C cannot happen at the same time. They cannot happen simultaneously. So this means A will not be connected at all to C. But we know that B will be in the middle because we're already told that A intersects with B. So therefore... I'm going to draw in my three circles so we can see there is sections where these intersect, etc. So I'm now going to label them. So I'm going to do this in purple. So I'm going to label our first one as A, our second one as B, and our third one as C. So first of all, we need to remember back to the question and think about what information we're given. So we're told that the probability of A is equal to 0 0.35. We have that the probability of B is equal to 0 0.45. We have that the probability of A intersect B is equal to 0 0.13. And we're more recently given that the probability of C is equal to 0 0.20. So we first of all, we can see there is one thing which we can just slot into our diagram. So we have the probability of A intersect B is equal to 0 0.13. And we can see that this is this area here where we have the intersection between A and B. So therefore we can draw in 0 0.13 here. And then we also know the probability of A. So we can now work out the remaining part of this, which is going to go in here. So that is going to be 0 0.35 which is a probability of a minus 0 0.13 so we'll have 0 0.35 
and we'll take away 0 0.13. So therefore, in this point, we'll have 0 0.22. And the next thing we can do, we know that B and C are independent. Hence, we know that this will mean that the probability of B intersects C is going to be equal to the probability of B multiplied by the probability of C. And we know the probability of B and the probability of C. So substituting these in, we have 0 0.45 and we multiply that by 0 0.20 and this is equal to 0 0.019. So we can therefore now look at our Venn diagram and we have the intersection of B and C is going to be this area here and we know the value for that. So that is going to be equal to 0 0.09. And then like we did for the remaining part of A, we can now fill out the remaining part of C and that is going to be equal to the probability of C minus this intersection value. So that's going to be 0 0.20 and then we subtract 0 0.09. So we therefore have that that is equal to 0 0.11. So our next step is going to be to take a look at this part here. So we know we can work this remaining part out because we have the probability of B and the two intersections there. So we'll have that this one is going to be equal to the probability of B, 0 0.45, and then we subtract 0 0.13 and 0 0.09. And putting this into our calculator or doing it in our head, we get that this is left as 0 0.23. So then there's one more thing that we need to do. So we've done everything we need to do relating to A, B and C, but we now need to say what the what's the remainder. We need to fill out what fills this section here. So all around are three circles. And we can work this out as follows. We have that the probability of the union of A and B and C is going to be equal to 1 minus everything else. So we're going to add all the other parts. So we're going to have go from left to right 0 0.22 plus 0 0.13 plus 0 0.23 plus 0 0.09 plus 0 0.11 and then this is going to be equal to 1 minus 0 0.78 and that is going to be equal to 0 0.22 so therefore we know that everything else is going to be equal to 0 0.22 so we'll then just write this in here and we've therefore completed the question and we have successfully filled out our Venn diagram so in this question there was five marks available so we achieved our first mark for drawing out our circles. So then we see our next mark for attempting to work out the probability of B intersects C. And then we receive our third mark for successfully getting 0 0.09. We then receive our fourth mark for correctly working out 0 0.13 and 0 0.09. So I'll just put this mark in here. And then we receive our fifth and final mark for having our full Venn diagram as being correct. So in part D of the question, for two marks, we're asked to find the probability of the complement of the union of B and C. So we know that the union of B and C is going to be everything in B and C. So if we look back at our diagram here, that our Venn diagram that we've drawn, we know that the union of B and C is going to be everything that is contained within B and C. So we know that the complement of this is going to be everything else out with of what is in B and C. So we can see in our diagram here that everything out with of this is going to be 0 0.22 and 0 0.22. So writing this down, we have that the probability of the union of B and C complement will be everything that is not part of B and or C. So therefore from our diagram above we have that the probability of the union of B and C complement is going to equal 0 0.22 plus 0 0.22 
which is equal to 0 0.44. And we have completed the question. There was two marks available. So we received one mark for having the correct method. So knowing to add 0 0.22 and 0 0.22 from our diagram above. And then we get our second mark for having the correct answer, which was 0 0.44.